Hi, everyone. Today I was at uh, my daughter's high school that she wants to go to next year, and I started thinking about children, and I found this beautiful story. You know, children are a gift from the Creator, and if we remember to appreciate them, it's really amazing. You know, children are like the angels of the sky, and they're sent to us. And all the years that we take care of them and make sure that they grow up, they fill our house with such joy and love. And, you know, I've seen many weddings. I've seen many, many joyous occasions of children. And I was reading a story about children. And it says that there once was a, um, a woman and she was married for 15 years, and she didn't have children. And they would go from Kabbalist to Kabbalist to find out and to pray and to ask for children, but 15 years they didn't have children. So she didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to do with her time. Her time was very empty. And she decided that she was going to go and volunteer at a hospital. So she went to the hospital, and she decided that she was going to look for the harder cases. And she found a woman, an old woman, who was very sick. And she didn't have anybody in the world. So this woman decided that she was going to take care of her. And for two years, she took care of her. She sometimes even slept at the hospital with her. She would come and she would change her and bring her food. And she really took care of her and gave all of herself for this woman until the day she died. And even while this woman was dying, she still took care of her. And she was there next to her. Now, just before the woman left the world, the old lady said to her, you know, here in this world, I have no way of thanking you for everything you've done, for how long you've been by my side, for everything you've done for me. But I promise you this. When I get up to heaven, I'm going to stand in front of the Creator, and I'm going to ask the Creator to give you a child. And the story goes that she was able to give birth after so many years. And she was able to really feel the joy and happiness of children. Unfortunately, there are some couples who, have, who don't have children. For anybody who does, appreciate their simplicity. Appreciate that they have the connection to the Creator. You know, the older they get, the harder it gets. And they're able to connect. Children are pure, pure souls. If you look at a child, you know, as an adult, we get very upset. You know, we want things the way we want them. And then when we get them, we're still upset because it wasn't the way we wanted it. Have you ever seen a child want something and cry about something? The minute he gets something, he's happy. That's it. Everything is fine. Because there's such a present, and it doesn't come easily. What we need to understand is that we have gifts all the time from the Creator. And children, of course, are one of them. You know, there's doctors in the world, and there are the regular doctors who cure people through their knowledge. They cure people through medicine. And they really are doing an amazing job, and they're doing a very important job. And they have certain knowledges. They have certain things that they do. But there's a certain kind of healing that can only be done, and it's called refuagdosha, holy healing. What does it mean? You don't need to be knowledgeable. 
about pills, about medicine. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't need to be a doctor. The only thing you need to have is to be able to feel the pain of others. Because doctors are able to cure someone without having to feel their pain. They know so much about the human body. They know so much about diseases. There's only one little thing missing. And again, I'm not saying that doctors don't do an amazing job in this world. Of course they do. There's only one little thing missing, and that's feeling pain of others. And this story happened probably 150 years ago. There was a Kabbalist by the name of Mendele, and he was supposed to become a great Kabbalist. And there was a tradition in that time that before someone got the position of being such a high Kabbalist of the town, they would go out to see everyone in their towns, to see the world, and to really experience the world through others, through the pain of others. So he used to go from city to city, and he would talk to the people, he would sleep at people's houses, and every time that he went by the specific city, he would see a little girl dancing outside her house, so happy, so content, as if she was dancing for herself. So he went up to her, and right away the girl ran to him as if she knew him and said, you know, can I bring you something to eat? Can I bring you something to drink? And she didn't know that he was such a great Kabbalist. He would hide his presence so that he could really feel the people. And she was probably about 10 or 11, but she was amazing. And she had so much love and so much joy that he would say to her, sure, if that's what you would like, I would love to eat, I would love to drink. And then she would run out and she would bring a little table and a little chair and bring him tea and a cake. And they felt a connection. They felt something very special between the two of them. And he did this probably for about a year or two until he was able to build himself up and really feel the pain of others. And then he went back to his town to become a great Kabbalist. Many years later, this, this little girl grows up. And when she was about 17, she became paralyzed and she couldn't move. For many years, her parents took her from doctor to doctor, from Kabbalist to Kabbalist, and nobody, nobody could help her. And it became worse and worse. And she became so paralyzed that she couldn't move at all, and she had to lie down, and they would lift her and move her from place to place. And then this little girl heard about a great Kabbalist from a certain town. And she said to her parents, you know what? I feel that you need to take me to this man. He's going to heal me. And unfortunately, sometimes we don't listen to children. And her parents said, you know, we're going to look for more doctors. We're going to look for more people to take you to. And they kept on going to different doctors, and nothing happened. In the end, the little girl said to them, listen, if you're not going to take me there, I'm going to crawl there. So you need to take me there. So of course, her parents decided to listen to her. And they put her on a wagon. They got into their horse and wagon. And they were going to this town where she believed this Kabbalist could heal her. And it was a very long ride, you know, it probably took a day or two. It was very long in those days. And they were, they were so tired that half the way they wanted to turn back, but their daughter just kept on pushing them and pushing them. And it was winter, it was cold, it was raining. Sometimes they would have to get out of the wagon to move the snow away. And then one evening, they got close to the town, and their daughter was so excited. They were going to stay in a little inn outside of the town. But she said, no, we're not going to stop. We have to go all the way. Now, at the same time, this Kabbalist, who was able to feel the pain of people, felt inside of him that this little girl was coming. But he had no idea why. And he said to the people that were with him, and he said to his students, you know, it's late, it's dark. 
in about an hour, someone's going to come here and ask me for help. I need you to make sure that there'll be enough candles to light. And I want you to put in the corner, on that table over there, a glass of tea and a piece of cake. So of course, of course all his students, all the people that were there, looked at him kind of strange, but they did what he said. And of course, an hour later, a knock on the door. And it's dark, and it's cold, and it's snowing, and they're so tired, the parents. And the little girl, the little girl is begging to the Creator, saying, you know what, this is my last chance. This is my last test. Please help me, Creator. Please make this be how I can get healed. So at 2 in the morning, they're knocking on the door. And the parents are sure that at 2 in the morning, who's going to even listen to them? Who's going to even look at them? But the minute they walked in with the stretcher and the little girl on it, everyone gets up to greet them and says, you know, we've been waiting for you. This Kabbalist has been waiting for you. And they go and they light all the candles. And the Kabbalist looks at the little girl, who's now probably 17 or 18, and says to her, you knew I was waiting for you, right? And she looks at him and says, I could never forget you. And they look at each other. And he says to her, you know, I've never forgotten every time you took care of me. And his eyes start filling with tears. And he's crying, and he's crying. And he's probably crying more than the little girl and her parents cried the, all the years together. And he says to her, you know, I've never forgotten you. And all of a sudden, he stops crying. And he looks at, at her parents. And he looks at her. And he says, you know, do you remember what you used to do for me? Do you remember that you would ask me if I wanted tea and cake? And when I said yes, you would go and get the tea and cake and bring it to me? She says, yes, of course I remember. And he points in the corner at the tea and the cake. And he says to her, can you do that for me now? Can you go and get that tea and cake and bring it to me? And the little girl says, of course I can. And she gets up and she walks to get the tea and cake. And everyone is shocked. Her parents are shocked. And she goes and she brings it to him. And what's the story here? The bond between the two of them and the pain that the Kabbalist felt for this child helped heal her. The Creator works in mysterious ways. And the children, our children, like I said before, in this world, always bring happiness, always bring love to the world. We just need to connect to that.